When I was a kid growing up, I went to a school that was a very like school pride. My high school had a lot of school pride. And one of the things that we did at the end when you're senior year was they had something called senior seminar. Senior seminar is they take high school seniors and they basically, most seniors, and they team you up with freshmen and they have school pride and school weekend and basically you make it. Now, I was not a great student in, at all by any, I was, a, I was a rough kid growing up. Like, I'm still paying my mom back. I don't know how much I owe her, but I owe her. I was such a bad kid, I'll never forget one time I walked into the principal's office where I spent most of my time and the principal, I kid you not, I walk in, he picks up the phone and it's my mom. I said, how'd you get my mom? He goes, oh, I moved your mother to speed dial. It was just easier for me. And he shows me his phone. His wife, his mom, my mom. And my mom is like central. You know those Jewish mothers that are like crazy defenders of their kids? You know, you know those types of like, it's insane what they say, but they just get away with it. You know those mothers? My mother is central casting like that. She'd pick up the phone every time, Mrs. Harari, and then she'd go into it. He didn't do it. It's not his fault. He's going to be a lawyer one day. His grandfather survived the Holocaust. And he's like, Mrs. Harari, he almost burnt the school down. And she's like, uh, you can get insurance proceeds. The, uh, the building was ugly. That type of psychoness, you know what I'm talking about? That's my mom. Defending me to a level where, like, even I'm uncomfortable. One year, I ran for the student vice president, and I won. He sees me in the hallway and goes, Charlie, something positive besides basketball. I'm like, I think basketball's positive. He goes, you did something for the school. I'm so proud of you. Come to my office. We're going to call your mom and give her a nachas report. I'm like, what does that word even mean? I never heard that word before. Used in my direction. He goes, we're going to tell her something nice about you. I'm like, this is wonderful. I don't know how she's going to react. I'll never forget this. I go to his office, sit down, picks up the phone. It's my mom. He goes, Mrs. Harari. And he goes, she goes into it. He didn't do it. It's not his fault. He didn't mean it. His grandfather survived the Holocaust. So he goes, Mrs. Harari, Mrs. Harari, Mrs. Harari. He goes, I am calling for something good. And I forget this. It's silence. And she goes, who is this? <laughs> yep. That's me. So I'll never forget. my sp Listen, I'll tell you honestly. I was a good kid. I just couldn't sit. I could barely stand behind the podium. Can you imagine me sitting for eight years or 12 years? Forget about it. It, it wasn't happening. I'm bouncing all over the place. So I wasn't a good student, but I was a good kid. I played basketball. I was involved in whatever. And I always thought in my heart that the school knew that. I always thought the school got it. There are student kids that just can't sit. But they're not bad kids. They just can't sit. You know, there's a, there's a difference. I'll never forget the day that they published the seminar list. The seminar lists are all the seniors they want interacting with freshmen. I mean, it's not like you have to be like a math tutor. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's not a tough list to get on. I'll never forget this my whole life. I go to school that morning. I walk right up to that list. Seminar is my thing. Are you kidding me? I'm ready to rock and roll. I got the songs. I got the whole thing. I go on the list and I'm like, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I'm like, huh, there's no H. Maybe they spelled Harari with a Q. I don't know. I, J, K, ah, <laughs> I must have missed it myself. A, B, C, D, E, ah, A, B, C, D. And it dawned on me. They didn't put me on the list. And for the first time in my life, I said to myself, maybe I'm a bad kid. Like, maybe I'm a bad kid. Like, I thought I was a good kid that couldn't sit, but maybe they see something in me that I didn't see in myself. Maybe I'm really a bad kid. They don't want me around other kids. And I felt so stupid. I'm like, I'm such a moron. Like, here I am thinking that I'm a good kid. All these years I'm walking around and like thinking like they know that like I'm a good guy. I just can't sit. And here I am. I'm a bad influence. And that hit me like a punch in the stomach. I called my mom and said, Mom, I got to go home. She's like, you okay? I'm like, I got to go home. And like on the way out, people are like, you going to seminar? I'm like, seminar is stupid. I hate seminar. You know, just to be a guy about it. I go home, I'm out for the day. Our principal was a guy named Rabbi Eliach. He's one of the famous principals in New York. He had a son named Yotav Eliach who taught me Zionism in ninth grade. I'm in 12th grade. Three years ago, one elective class. I'm sitting in my house. My mom picks up the phone. She goes, Charlie, Rabbi Eliach's on the phone for you. I'm like, Rabbi Eliach, the principal? I wasn't even in school. How do I get in trouble from being in my house? So I pick up the phone, I'm like, hi, Rabbi Eliach, it's me. I didn't do it, it's not my fault, I'm going to be a lawyer one day. My grandfather's so I have the Holocaust. 
And he goes to me, no, 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 no. It's not Rabbi Eliach, it's Yotav Eliach. I said, Yotav? Why are you calling me? I haven't been in your class in three years. He goes, you know, I was walking by the hall today. I looked at the list of people that were on seminar. I saw they didn't pick you. Man, they missed it. You're a good kid. You can't sit. But you're a good kid. How did they not see that? Just wanted you to know. 30 seconds. Changed my life. 30 seconds of this man's time to, to see a piece of me that nobody saw. 30 seconds of someone's time to look at me and go, no, 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 don't form that schema. Don't you dare form the scheme that says you're a bad influence. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. You're a good kid. I see it in you. I can tell you, the next year I was in Israel for the year, there were moves that I made, and when I was about to make this decision or that decision to change my life, you know what rang in my head? Not my mom, although she's awesome. Yes, you can. You know what rang in my head? My teacher from ninth grade who said, I see you. I see you. You're a good kid. You could be great in life. I see you. We spend our lives trying to feel like we're more when everyone around us is begging for somebody to see them. The greatest gift we have is our eyes. And we can use it to go to our family and to our friends and to our employees and to our every, and you could use your eyes to walk around and see the greatness in other people that they don't see in themselves. They'll fight you for it. They'll disagree with you. It doesn't matter. But by looking at them to who they can be, you may be unlocking a piece of them that would never have come out but for you. Not because they're not trying, but because their brain can't see it.